So you just got Gwenaifen and you're wondering how to build her. In this video we'll be going over what her abilities do, what traces to prioritize, what's her best light cone, relics, party composition, and much more. So with that out the way, let's get into this, yeah? We'll first go over her abilities. Gwenaifen's basic attack standing ovation doesn't do anything special on its own, and we'll come back to this later. Her skill Blazing Welcome does blast damage. This means the main target will take the most damage, while adjacent enemies will take less. Every enemy hit has a chance to be burned with a 100% base chance, which is really good. The one thing to point out is the burn has the highest damage over time scaling we've seen so far. Her ultimate Watch This Showstopper does AoE to every single enemy, and if they have a burn, it'll be activated right away. This is really strong when we consider her talent. Her talent Patreon Benefits applies Fire Kiss to any enemy that suffers burn damage when she's on the field. This means the ultimate will trigger for one stack before their turn. The on the field text is very important to point out as this means any burn can apply Fire Kiss. You don't need to just rely on Gwenaifen to burn the enemies, and we'll go over that later in the teammate section. Fire Kiss increases the amount of damage the target takes by 7%, which stacks up to 3 times for 21%. This is the highest form of this debuff compared to the prior users, which were Luka and Weld. And lastly, her technique Showcase Attacks the enemy and launches 4 attacks that have a chance to apply Fire Kiss. The general gameplay of Gwenaifen is pretty simple. Before combat starts, you'll want to use her technique for some free Fire Kiss stacks. Afterwards, you'll definitely want to spam her basic attacks and ultimate when it's up for a support playstyle. Now if you want to deal some damage then you want to start off with her skill, do 2 basics, and then Renz and VP. Remember when I said her basic wasn't anything special? Well that's before we went over to Trace, High Poles. This now has a chance to burn the enemy with the same potency as her skill. This is insanely strong as it allows her to now generate SP without spending any while still fulfilling her role. Walking on knives may sound dangerous but it will also increase her damage by 20%. We always take free damage when we can. Bladed Hoop advances her action by 25%, which allows her to set up some burns for teammates like Kefka. We'll go over that more in the teammates section. Now when it comes to prioritizing her traces, you'll definitely want her talent and skill to be maxed out for the full damage increase and damage over time. Her ultimate is up next as it'll be a noticeable damage increase. Lastly, her basic can stay a level 1 since it won't increase the base chance of activating high poles, which is the main reason you'll be using this so you could save your resources for other units. Gwenaifen is a 4 star unit, which means you'll eventually get her Eidolons. So let's go over them. Slurping Noodles during handstands gives her a chance to reduce the enemy's effect res by 10% whenever you skill. I can't stress how good this is. The first time we ever saw something so powerful was on Silver Wolf's Eidolon 2. And now here it is on a 4 star unit. While we do have to use our skill to get the same effect, it does help reduce the effect hit rate requirements for our other allies and we'll cover those later. Brushing Teeth while whistling gives any burn 40% more damage whenever she basics or skills. This is really strong as it could proc on any burn. Blocking Pike Witnet gives her 2 energy whenever her burn goes off. This is a nice little energy gain. And lastly her best Eidolon Catching Bullet with Hands. This gives her another stack of Fire Kiss which is insanely broken. This is the equivalent of a Memory of Chaos Turbulence we had which allowed us to do 30% more damage when we killed the Trotter except now we don't have to kill anyone but we just have to let the enemy burn baby burn. It'll be 30% because you'll get Swallowing Swords to Stomach to reach her E6 which allows her to get 2 more levels on her talent. Now that we covered her Eidolons, let's go over her Light Cones. For those looking to dish out the most damage, Good Night and Sleep Well will be her best option. She already fulfills two of the three debuffs all on her own. Her second best light cone will be Eyes of the Prey, which will increase her burn damage while making it easier to hit the effect hit rate requirement. If you got in the name of the world then this will be her third best option for personal damage. It'll have a 100% uptime for damage increase and when using your skill you have even more effect hit rate so you can land her skill if you opt to go for less effect hit rate and we'll go over that in the stats section. Now for those using her mostly for support, then Resolution Shines as Pearls of Sweat will be her best option. This will apply a defense down which exponentially scales with her Fire Kiss. This will allow your DPS to do more damage which is overall more team damage. Now that we covered her best light cones, let's go over her relics. For the most damage you'll want to get a 2 piece of Fire Smith of Lava Forging for 10% more fire damage. 
Getting the four piece is bad as it only activates after her ultimate and it only lasted for one turn. Instead, you'll want to pair this with a two piece of Musketeer of Wild Wii for the 12% attack. Now I don't recommend farming Conflagration Domain since the relic sets are only used on a handful of units in the game making it not resource efficient. Instead you could run a 4 piece of Musketeer of Wild Wii which will increase your speed and allow her to do 10% more basic attack damage. The best part is you don't actually need to farm this as you could get this for free just doing your weeklies Echoes of War. After using Gwenyphon for a few days she's rather squishy so the Elixir's Domain is looking really tempting. This domain houses the Longevous Disciple and the Messenger Traversing Hacker space set. Longevous will increase her HP by 12% so she can survive to debuff your enemies. Messenger will give her 6% more speed so she can hit those important thresholds. I'll go over those in a bit. This domain is also very resource efficient to farm as almost every single unit in the game can benefit from either of the two piece. Besides this domain you could run two piece of Guard of Withering Snow for a solid 8% damage reduction. This is more effective HP than HP or defense stats and you can't find this anywhere else making this invaluable. Moving on to our planner ornaments. For the most damage you want to pick up Space Ceiling Station from World 3. This will give her 12% attack and another 12% if she has 120 speed. Funny enough her best supporting set is also found in the same world. Fleet of Ages increases her HP by 12% and if you have 120 speed you'll also increase all allies attack by 8%. This includes herself so she could deal more damage. Now that you know which domain to farm, what are the main stats you should be looking for? For chess piece you'll want either attack percent so you could do more damage or effect hit rate if you're doing a support build. For shoes you'll want speed boots so you can hit those thresholds. For the planner orb you'll want fire damage if you're looking to deal more damage or HP or defense percent if you're looking to support your team. On the rope attack percent for more damage and HP or defense percent if you're looking to support the team. For substats Gwenyphon wants as much speed so she can keep up with the enemy so her burn doesn't fall off. Any effect hit rate you need left to hit the threshold followed by attack percent. HP and defense percent so she stays alive. Depending on your Eidolons, Gwenyphon will need 67% effect hit rate to land her skill. Her high pole trace however will need 108% effect hit rate. Now if you have her Eidolon 1, you'll only need 79% effect hit rate. I don't recommend you going out of your way for this and on screen you can see the impact of her Eidolon 1. It'll make it more likely that you'll land her high pole trace. 3000 HP and 1000 defense is the bare minimum you should have on her, any less and you risk the chance of her getting one shot. As for speed, the more the better, but the classic 134 will be mentioned for now. Now that we've gone over her stats, let's see if Gwenyphon needs energy regeneration rope. Her normal rotation is her applying her skill, then using her basic twice, reapplying her skill, and then one more basic afterwards so she could ultimate. This is a 5 turn rotation which is really slow and just by adding an energy regeneration rope, we can cut out the basic at the end for a 4 turn rotation. Now I normally advocate for cutting your rotation shorter so you can get more ultimates. In Gwenyphon's case however, her ultimate isn't as powerful as other units so it's okay if she has a slow one. But if you want, then you can use energy regeneration rate. Her Eidolon 4 doesn't speed up her ultimate as of now, but maybe in the future we'll get more energy regeneration rate to cut her to 3 turns. If we do, I'll update the description and pin comments. Now to be gone over if she needs energy regeneration rate, let's go over those speed thresholds. Gwenyphon has a solid base speed of 106. This means after speed boots you'll have 131 speed. With 2 piece messenger set or 4 piece musketeer you're already 137.3. With just 5 speed sub rolls you'll hit 146.7 threshold which will allow her to get 11 turns in 6 cycles. This is the speed I recommend you aim for and the more the better but we don't need to mid max that hard. Now that we gone over how much speed Gwenyphon needs, let's go over her best teammates. Asta's free and she screams pick me. Asta increases your attack, speed, and fire damage which is everything Gwenyphon's looking for. On top of all that, she could also burn the enemy which accelerates fire kiss stacks. Since Gwenyphon's burn is the highest scaling one so far, Kafka would love to have her as a teammate. She could activate her burn for burst damage as well as help ramp up fire kiss faster. Her rerun will be down the road so if you enjoy seeing your enemies die to a ton of tiny numbers on the screen then consider saving up for her. 
Besides these two, Gwenyphon can easily slot into any team that needs any form of damage increase. The ideal team for Gwenyphon will be Asta, Kefka, Gwenyphon, and any sustain. Now since she released in 1.4, then consider Asta, Gwenyphon, Natasha, and the Fire MC for a solid team. Preservation units can use Trend of Universal Market Light Cone, which has a chance to apply burn to enemies, which will quickly ramp up Fire Kiss. Since I pulled Zila, here's what I'll be using for anyone else who has her. Gwenyphon, Zila, Asta, and Fire MC with Trends of Universal Market. The Fire Kiss on multiple enemies, with defense down from Resolution Shines as Pearls of Sweat, will set up Zila to get more kills and activate her resurgence. Hopefully this video helped answer any questions you may have about Gwenyphon, and if you have any unanswered ones, then please ask in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this one, consider checking out my Ting Yun one right here. Until the next video, I'll see ya.